I'd like the, the panel to introduce themselves so you know that uh, who is here and who uh, you can address uh, with your questions. And I, I think we're starting with Heather over on uh, your left. So let's hand it Heather. Good evening. My name's Heather Steele. I'm representing the Canterbury Earthquake Temporary Accommodation Service. So there's three streams to our service, and the first one is the Earthquake Support Coordination Service, whereby free to you there is um, the ability for you to link in with a coordinator who will be able to support you through your journey with your earthquake issues. So that could be just for one particular um, difficulty that you're experiencing or right through the process from A to, to the end really. Um, it will help you find the information um, that can help you make the decision at the end of the process and move forward. It could be linking you into the various agencies such as EQC, Fletcher EQR, your insurance, uh, residential advice service, etc. We have a presence here at the hub when it's open Monday to Thursday and we have an earthquake support coordinator that you can pop down and have a chat with any time and tonight Nairi and I are available. We also can support you attending meetings, etc. and sometimes it's good for you to have a, a second pair of ears at a meeting and for us to help record what is being said at that meeting. The second part of our service is the, temp is the matching and placing service, which is when it's time for you to move out for the process to have your home repaired or rebuilt, then we can assist you find temporary accommodation if you require. So that could be in private accommodation. We have a team of staff that will help match you in the location that you want and um, the type of housing that's best to meet your need. And it could be in private accommodation, holiday housing, it may be government supporting housing. We manage the villages at Linwood, Rawiti, Rangers, and at the moment we've got Kaipoi on board as well. The third form of assistance is the financial package that the government has available called the Temporary Accommodation Assistance, and that's not income tested, and it's available when your insurance money is exhausted, or you have no, no other form of you know, support to help you in your temporary accommodation. Thank you. Good evening, I'm John Goddard, Supervising Solicitor for the Residential Advisory Service. First of all, I'd just like to um, support everything that Heather said. The Earthquake Support Coordination Service is an excellent service, and we work very closely with them in a number of our cases, especially supporting more vulnerable customers as they work through their issues. What re the Residential Advisory Service, or RAS, does is we provide free legal or technical advice for a limited time. So we've got a team of about 11 solicitors who are working through Community Law Canterbury. Um, we also have a technical panel which has three firms of engineers and one firm of quantity surveyors, and they carry out peer reviews, mainly of repair solutions, repair methodologies, to see if they meet the standard in the MB guidelines and would meet the standard in the building code we have a presence here at the hub. We're here um, Monday to Thursday, currently 9 to 6, and here at the seminars on a Thursday as well. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Walt Fregel. I'm the head of Fletcher EQR. So clearly, we are the um, project management office for EQC to manage the home repair program in Canterbury. Um, so at this stage we have completed somewhere around 67,000 uh, home repairs with another 2,000 still to go. Um, we are basically shifting the, the focus um, into, you know, CEDAR type matters and other um, issues that uh, people have as a result of the repair program. Um, and that's going to continue to happen, um, and we'll put more resource into that as the as the year unfolds. So um, we're getting well through the first time repairs, and um, the efforts are now going into you know sorting out those other issues. So um, keen to answer your questions tonight. Thanks very much. Uh, evening, everyone. My name is Michael Price. Um, I head up the uh, dwelling settlement team at EQC. 
Uh, that's whether we settle it by managed repair or by cash settlement. Uh, I just want to start off by acknowledging that um, we accept all of the MB findings. Uh, we're pretty disappointed at, at what has been found in, the, in terms of the levels of workmanship. We also accept all the recommendations that MB have made and we're actively working on a number of those which we can share with you during the questions. Um, and with me tonight is a couple of people from our community contact team and they are here in the hub. Uh, they have a presence here uh, also Monday through to Thursday. So uh, we can take some questions as a group, happy to hang around and talk individually, but also there's an opportunity to follow up with those people. So. All right, thanks very much panel. And uh, thank you very much to everyone um, on the panel for, for coming along and to front uh, the questions which I'm sure everyone uh, is ready and ready to, uh, rearing to sort of put to you. Um, as a, I'll just repeat, if you just remember, it's just the one question, please. Now, if someone asks you a question and you kind of want to add in, if you can just hold on to that, we will come through and we'll, we'll, we'll get to you. And just remembering, just let the panel answer and we will get that all nicely on camera so that you can see it again later. So thanks very much for your patience. We're just starting down the back. Ma'am. Um, hi, I'm Jennifer. Mine's for the... Ministry. Okay, uh, my question is, I wrote it down so I wouldn't bumble it all up. But I understand only completed repairs were looked at. What about the ones that are not completed? The homeowner knows the repairs are shoddy and could actually do with some help. And we'd really like some support on this from the Ministry. And we're wondering where it is. We're the ones that are sort of battling away. They haven't actually managed to get rid of us. They keep trying, but we keep battling in and we have done for years, and it's a, we're really looking for someone who can start and help, and we're the ones that aren't signed off, the ones that aren't completed. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for writing it down. Fully understand your concerns, and the survey was really just to try and capture the, the finished state of the repair, rather than something which was in the process of still being repaired. I'm not sure whether MB is the right agency to talk to your concerns, but maybe what I'll do is invite EQC or EQR. So if the repair is still in progress, if, if that's what I'm understanding you're saying. Um, Okay, well, that, that, um, we, we might talk later about your particular circumstances and see what we can do to help you. Um, but generally speaking, if the repair is already in progress, as, as a result of this MB survey, um, and I'll pass it on to Walter in a moment, we, we have had a good look at quality assurance processes and there is a number of changes around making sure there's really good contact between the engineer, the builder on site, and the contract supervisor so that we can make sure we, we, we detect this sort of work before it becomes an issue. So I'll just ask Walt to comment a little bit on that. Um, I think I've met you before, haven't I? Yeah. And I do, I know that your claim has been sitting there for a long time. And so, and, and, sorry? No, and good on you. And, and I think the, you know, unfortunately you're one of a few people who have had ongoing disputes for a fair while now. And, um, you know, what I acknowledge is that we have to resolve your issues, you know, and it needs a concerted effort. And, you know, we've been talking to a few groups today, uh, CanCern, and, you know, groups like that, that hopefully we can work with to come in and start to, you know, assist us to get some independence and some, some go forward on, on claims like yours that are that are stuck, because at the end of the day, you know, you can't go on uh, year after year without any resolution to your to your issues. So, you know, yeah, that's I why we're looking towards the ministry to come and start and be of some help. <coughs> um, I'm not going to talk about the specifics of your case, but I would say that generally, under the Consumer Guarantees Act, there is a guarantee that all services, including building services, will be completed within a reasonable time. Mm -hmm. And similarly, there is a warranty in the Building Act as well, which applies even if you're not a party to the contract, <coughs> and people generally aren't under the Canterbury Home Repair Programme, that building work will be completed within a reasonable time. Okay. The, the reason that we're actually here and speak to the Ministry is what we've found is 
we've got a non-compliant with the Building Act and we've found that um, EQR and EQC are using the Building Act Section 1 to cover up for work that should have a consent. And because we're left out of the um, survey and the people that are there and we've been disputing it, and if we're told by the Ministry and the, county, uh, the Council that it needs a building consent, then what do you do? Yeah, I think we've got to talk about your situation offline. Because uh, I know. I well, don't think so. I think it's up to it's up to the ministry to answer because we've gone to the ministry and asked them. They've come back and told us that you need to do that, and the council tells us, and that's eight months down the track. So you're saying here with this jack and pack, and you're going to do everything right. So where's the confidence to do that? So just to clarify what the Ministry's powers are and aren't, we really have no power to intervene in individual building cases. We set the building code, the building standard, and then we work with local authorities like the Christchurch City Council to administer that. And so we just cannot, under law, get involved as the building regulator. But um, that's part of the reason why MB is being working yep. with the RAS. Yep. So. Just hold on. They've done the work. The work's done. The work has been without a building consent. So then where do we go? The work has already been completed. In that situation, um, one solution would be for Fletcher's to apply to council for a certificate of acceptance. Then the council looks at the building work and will tell you whether or not it meets the building code. And I really uh, I do appreciate that question. I mean, it's a question that many people have had. It happened this afternoon. It's happened when people have come in here. It's a very valid question, all right? And we've got some answers here today. And a, a part of, I think, the answer is it's trusting, isn't it? It's, it's how, how long do you put that trust? And so we certainly have been talking about that today. So I do thank you for the question. And uh, hopefully we won't come up too many more times, but uh, just watch the space. So thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thanks for that. Coming Did forward, you have one. A question, Diana? How about you? You're okay. fine. Just coming through on this side. Any questions? Ma'am. Um, just wondering about the impact that this process, the follow up looking, is going to have at the re existing remediation processes. Um, as someone who signed off my repairs 12 months ago and I spent the last 11 months trying to get them fixed. Um, and the response from EQC to my recent complaint was, suck it up because there are people who haven't had repairs, um, which absolutely, on one hand, but if, is this going to delay the existing remediation? Oh, that's a good question. I hope we didn't use that language when you did call us. Um, but, but oh, I think I'm the, whatever the file is for the difficult clients now, it's been a very, very difficult process. Right, but I mean, you're right in what you're saying. Um, we do have remediation claims that we're yet to get to, um, and our priority is with getting people back into houses and first time repairs. Mm -hmm. However, if, if that remediation work is urgent, because it's affecting the safety or security or weather tightness of a home, it will be given priority. Um, we are looking to put on an expanded team to try and get some good progress on those remediation claims that, we're, that we've got. Um, the work we talked tonight about addressing the MBase, MBase survey will happen in parallel, so it won't mean that remedials go to the back of the queue. We're trying to progress it all at the same time. Sorry, I know it was only one question. Um, but in the last 12 months, I understand the remediation process be is between Fletcher's and EQC have changed on at least two occasions. Um, on each of those occasions, people who are in one kind of get bumped into the other. As much as you're saying that they're in parallel, um, does that mean there's going to be more process reshuffles and people having to have the same conversations for a fourth, fifth and sixth time? 
No, it's a fair criticism that when things have changed, some some cost customers actually lose a bit of progress. Um, so no, we've Walter and I worked Walter and I worked together. There's a new there is a new joined up process, and we're both putting on bigger teams on both sides of the organisation to make some progress. Okay, so that's good to hear, Michael, because again, it's another one of those questions about I've had X number of PMO people change, 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 and it feels like it's slowed down. So. It's great to hear that working together to actually try and keep us with the same face to the end, sir. Hello, my name is Colin. I've only got a very simple question. Because this has been filmed, I've heard somebody say it was going to be online. For those people who um, are not good with computerisation, can I actually purchase a copy of this film? Yes, you can. We, you don't have to purchase it. You can come and get a free copy when we put it on DVD, and we have some DVDs here. So yes. And can I have absolute assurance that it won't be edited? It will not. It will be edited where my face is taken out of it. <laughs> but in terms of the question and answers, it won't be edited at all. No, it'll be as 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 all the information that you need in terms of question and answer will remain. That's all I have to ask for now. Thank you. Hi. First of all, um, thank you all for being here. It's re really nice to have the support. Um, basically, I'm just wanting to know which person is the right person to talk to later. I bought my house in 2013 off a lady. EQC came in. They did the house up, was signed off. I bought the house, so I'm thinking, right, I'm settled, I'm here for good, da de da And now they've come in and they've decided that the land's no good and it's complete rebuild. So, like, yay, I'm lucky, <laughs> I'm getting a complete rebuild. But because I wasn't in the house at the time of the earthquake, I don't qualify for, um, what do you call it, accommodation allowance. So, like, where am I supposed to live for the next, yeah, how am I supposed to live? I'm one person on my own. So, I feel like I've been let down. I bought my house, EQC signed off, it's got insurance and everything. So, where do I go? Who's the best person to talk to about that? Can I just say, the rebuild of your house, is that being managed by your private um, I've been paid out by EQC. The money's sitting in the bank and I've got to hand that over to right. Southern, it's Southern Response, yes. Right. I might report this to DTS, because it's um, running an EQC matter, not one from Duckley. Yeah, but I, I don't know if... That's really going to help as in they're giving you an accommodation allowance or something which is 180 a week or something. But I've got to carry on paying my mortgage and find a, a new place to live. And like I bought my house, signed off, finished. How can they come in and say it's got to come down and we don't care about They're virtually saying... We don't care where you live for the next year. It's like, I did everything right. The insurance company have insured me. And I'm taking the stance at the moment that my house has been EQC signed off. The insurance company have insured me. We're a group of five and I'm, I'm refusing to move out of my house. That's, so what do I do? How do I say? Yeah. It would be worthwhile you having a conversation with the Canterbury Earthquake Temporary Accommodation Service. The criteria wouldn't normally allow you to qualify for the temporary accommodation assistance because you weren't living in the home at the time that you purchased it after the earthquakes, etc. Um, there is an exceptional circumstance mm -hmm. criteria or eligibility. Um, I'm not saying that you qualify for that or not, but we may be able to assist you to get you into supported accommodation like the village. Um, 
I, I appreciate that you've still got your mortgage, et cetera, to pay, but we may be able to assist you, um, an earthquake support coordinator, with perhaps talking to the bank to reduce payments and things like that while you're not in the home and extending out payments, et cetera, to alleviate hardship. All right. Yes, uh, it's, uh, it's a tough space to, to be in, so thank you. Coming along, sir. I have a question, I think it might be for Michael. Um, my question is, uh, should the public in general be able to have confidence that the assessors inspecting my property on behalf of EQC are suitably qualified to do so, and am I able to rely on their representations that damage they consider to be EQ related will be repaired? Well, the answer is yes, and, and our assessors and our estimators um, are trained um, in the assessment of earthquake damage, uh, and we, we run a, a, a two-person team. Um, one of those people is a, um, a qualified builder. Um, the other person is um, not a builder, but is perhaps more trained in um, just managing um, matters with customers and, and being able to explain explain the, the whole scoping process. So they are trained. Um, look, we haven't always got it right, I have to be honest about that. Certainly assessments done in those early times um, weren't always uh, to the standard we would like. Uh, but in recent years there's been a lot of training going to those people and we've put in qualified builders in every team. Um, the other thing is the, the uh, before your repair is started, if it's a managed repair, there's basically a rescope of that involving the EQR contractor. So um, there's, a, there's a second look at the whole assessment and repair strategy at that time. I live in a multi-unit dwelling. Right. We had to wait a substantial amount of time before the MB guidelines were set for repairs around multi-unit dwellings. So initially we had one set of assessors come in, approved damage as EQ related, and independent of that, I had a, a brother-in-law's brother who was also, uh, he'd been a builder for 40 something odd years and was also an assessor for um, a major insurance company, uh, look at damage in our house. So three years down the track, uh, we get rescoped before our repair started, and the assessor that did the rescope threw out some of the damage that was originally approved. Now, I believe that there is the possibility of the fact that I've relied on the initial assessment and that assessment has then been overridden um, and there could potentially be repercussions um, you know, for EQC um, if, with regards to like the, uh, I think it's called equitable estoppel or something along those lines. Yeah, I could perhaps let John talk about the principle of estoppel because it, uh, it's a legal term. But um, look, I'm happy to, to talk to you with afterwards, and I don't have the specifics of your property. But um, if, if we've done a rescope, that, um, I'd like to think there's a reason for that, and we can hopefully explain that to you. But I, I don't have those specifics on hand tonight. But let's talk afterwards, and I'll get your your details. But maybe John wants to talk about estoppel since you've raised that. Um, <coughs> estoppel can arise if someone said that they will do something and you have relied on that and then they want to change their position because they think they're legally entitled to. Um, if that is unfair or unconscionable, <coughs> then Estoppel says you can't do that. A similar argument is the Fair Trading Act, which says that when you're in trade you can't carry out conduct which is misleading or deceptive. Um, there's an argument as to whether or not EQC is in trade. Um, we consider they are they consider that they're not. Um, so that hasn't really been resolved. But I think the more important point is that if a scope is changed, then there should be a good reason for it. Because changing a scope might be the right decision, and it might not be. But um, there should be a clear reason why a scope has changed if it has changed. Thank you. Coming forward, this side. 
Hi. Yeah. Um, similar to the lady behind me, I'd just like to know who the best person to speak to is. Um, our house was part of the MB survey. Um, we purchased the house back in January. Um, the previous people had cashed out uh, on EQC and the cap repairs. I'd got a PMO company to um, supposedly do them. MB found that the repairs had not been undertaken. I'm just wondering where we go to and who the best person to speak to is. We were part of the MB When you say you cashed out, did you take an opt-out option? No, we didn't. We no. didn't. The previous owners oh, of the, the house the, cash the, settled the, with EQC. Right, but did they cash out as an opt-out and, yeah. and then arrange their own contractor? Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll pass you to John on this in a moment, but, but um, uh, it is a slightly difficult one because EQC hasn't managed your repair and when that previous owner took cash or opted out, they, they actually literally were taking on the responsibility of arranging and managing their own repair. So the, the contractual recourse is back with that original contractor, uh, but John and through the RAS may be able to give you some, some good advice. Um, if someone has, if a builder has said that they're going to do work and have invoiced for that work but haven't done that work, then that potentially is fraud and so that's a very serious allegation. Um, and we heard before that MB is looking at the conduct of some builders so that could be something that they would investigate further. <coughs> um, there are warranties in the Building Act again, so you may have a cause of action, and the appropriate forum for enforcing those warranties will depend on the amount that's at stake. So for a small amount, $15,000 or less, you can go to the Disputes Tribunal, don't need a lawyer, you can fill out the claims online, um, and a referee will make a decision which is binding on both parties. For larger amounts, it might be that court action is required, and so it's a matter of assessing whether or not the risk of bringing a case against the builder is worth it. And if there has been a sale, um, then in the contract agreement for sale and purchase there may be vendor warranties. And so if there's a warranty that the house meets the building code at the time of sale, for example, then there may be something that you can pursue against the vendor.